see you also have like beautiful edible flowers behind you. Um, I love to hear like how you got into that, who the customers are for, for edible flowers. Cause yeah, I don't even know what that is. Like that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah so this is, I'm this sorry, yeah, this is an <laughs> Egyptian star flower. The Egyptian star um, flower, interesting. Typically known as a penta. So yeah, I mean, these are great for a lot of pastry chefs. Um, can you do me a favor and grab us a Fiesta blend quickly? Yeah. Cassie's gonna run off and show you one of our Fiesta blends. But yeah, we do uh, mixed edible flower boxes. Um, honestly, we're gonna turn this whole rack into flowers. And wow. as we scale the business, there's a huge market for edible flowers that's uh, kind of untapped. And the price points on edible flowers are really, really pretty solid as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so one of our Fiesta blends, this, this is... Uh, it's something we sell a lot of. We do like a microgreen mix with flowers. Wow, yeah, that's, that's wow, that is beautiful. It's yeah, oh, that's a huge not, setup for whole set. It's good to focus there. So awesome. really a ton of our flowers go into these Fiesta blends. Wow, yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah, yeah so we grow about, you know, we do flowers in season, our marigolds, our pentas, our violas and pansies. Violas just came out of season, but our pansies are still available. And uh, yeah, just a good variety of flowers for our chefs. A lot of uh, kind of chefs use flower and flowers in pastries or in cocktails. So we see a lot of bartenders and uh, kind of pastry chefs using flowers and a lot of desserts and, and yeah. drinks and dehydrations and all sorts. So yeah, yeah flowers are great, great little addition to any green farm. And yeah. uh, it's definitely a cash crop right there. So for sure. People don't want to deal with them, but yeah, I know. Like, like it looks like they're extremely healthy. So I'm curious on like pest management because that seems to be one of the biggest challenges, especially here in South Florida, where like you know you have year-round pest yeah, potential. We have aphid issues. Right. Yeah. It kind of is one of those things like we don't spray, we don't want to spray. So yeah. when they get, they technically, like it's really just the flowers that get aphids. Yeah. Other than the sorrel, we rarely have any other issues in the farm. I and mean, when, when we get aphids, we just get rid of the flowers. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's unfortunate, just but it's just, again. we just start over. Yeah. 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 Have you ever tried? Seasonal anyways. You know, they're always, we're always changing yeah. the flowers. So it's. We use neem oils and all natural stuff, but nothing, nothing that's uh, of pesticides. But once they're in, they're yeah, they're really in. Yeah, hard yeah. to get rid of if you're not going to use poison. But also, I mean, yeah. if you look at the lifespan of a flower, you know, we can kind of grow it from seed to seed to harvest, so to say, in microgreen terminologies. You know, you're getting a good six to eight weeks out of a flower, and then we're starting new seedlings. Oh, okay, and we're getting nice. new production out of flowers as well, because yeah. yeah, we kind of don't want to over over harvest. They start they start not budding as much as they usually do. So yeah, you For kind sure. of have a lifespan of a, of a flower anyway. So once we they generally attack a lot of the older flowers as well. So our marigolds get hit. So we'll just change our flowers and start new seedlings. And yeah, that's good. amazing. Have you ever tried doing uh, IPM, like integrated pest management, for using like ladybugs, things like yeah. that? Yeah, we yes. use loads of ladybugs. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Does, we but it, does it help control or get rid of? Get it? rid of. Oh, okay. I would say the ladybugs need, they need a food supply. So yeah. they won't breed and they won't reproduce and they won't stay in the farm unless they have a food supply. So we have to we have to have bugs in here for them to stay here. Correct. Yeah. But also they didn't we haven't really used them in this farm. We use them a lot in the shipping containers. Mm. It was much easier to have them in the can, in the shipping containers because they didn't go any they wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. they had so a fair chance contained. of survival because we had to open the doors and rinse out so yeah. little guys didn't want to be there anymore could fly out. So yeah, yeah like, if there's no food they they want to leave. Yeah, so exactly. yeah, they're, yeah. Like, they're done, you know? For sure, yeah. <laughs> no interesting. That's that's really cool to know. So it looks like you have quite a few I see marigolds I see pansies, Pinters, marigolds, pansies. Um, yeah, right now, that's our four. Right yeah, three or four varieties right now. Earlier we just in the got season, rid of... we had violas, we had snapdragons. We used to do when we were outdoor growing. We had um, uh, butterfly peas and yeah. purple basil flower, but it's hard to do inside because they want to vine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just they have limitations with. So we had a whole outdoor. We had twelve beds and creeper walls, so we had a lot of flowers and stuff. Yeah. So, I think as we scale, if we move into a new operation, we'll kind of designate a space where we can strictly focus on uh, production of more edible flowers. Cassie's going to shoot me in the chest. <laughs> she doesn't want to move. She's like, we just got you. I don't want to. Um, yeah, no, I, I hear you on that. Yeah. Um, so in, ter like in terms of like one of my main concerns on edible flowers, why I didn't do it is I couldn't make the numbers work as well as microgreens. Gotcha. So how does that kind of work for you guys in terms of like, do you find that just the price point's so high that it, it works really well or like the labor... Is, is, is an issue or not yeah, an issue? Look, flowers take a lot of work. We do pruning uh, weekly. We repotting, we replanting. They take more nutrients. Um, so yeah, they definitely are a more labor labor of love in terms of flower production. I just think we have a good price point for flowers, so we make it up in the ah, sales. Yeah. Yeah. We're selling a 24 ounce clam for $40. So yeah. you know, the cool thing about flowers is you're not you know, harvesting a micro, you're getting rid of your flat. You harvest your flowers and it promotes more growth. So yeah. you do get a lot. Once you get your seedlings to a stage of, flower production then uh, it's a continuous harvest and 
yeah, we're not, we're not trying to do too many flowers. We've rather focused on Fiesta blends, which is our main seller to some yeah. of our wholesale clients. Yeah. So all of our yacht chefs who we typically focus on for flowers, you know, if they're buying four edible flowers, it's 250 bucks and we're getting 10 of those a week. It's That's an great. additional $2,000 in revenue just on yeah. flowers. So That's yeah, amazing. it's not a huge focus, but it's definitely another another revenue stream for a marketing business to kind of focus on. And I can guarantee you anywhere you are, you're going to sell flowers. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. When I started uh, 10 years ago, like edible flowers just really weren't, they weren't very popular, yeah, yeah, sure. you know? And it, it, and one thing that's really important for any sort of micro farm, whether you're starting out or established business is like, keep up with the trends mm -hmm. because like, for example, um, it, you know, wheatgrass as an example used to be so, so popular when yeah. I started. Yeah. Same thing with like buckwheat microgreens, which you guys may have never even heard yeah, of or we, seen. We oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Buck, yeah. But there's just not, there's not enough demand, right? No, there really isn't. Yeah. And Sunny's also kind of, you know, you look at Donny Greens, all the boys that are pumping out sunflowers. They're still, like still a good market for them. Not, I don't know. It's not a, a lot mess. of people want them either. Yeah. Yeah. I, I found that there's, there's demand for sunflower, but it's, um, with the best ways to use it is in mixes yeah, exactly. because in mixes like people aren't like, Oh, it's sunflower. I can get that anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a unique blend that has sunflower, Correct. maybe has some flowers, has some yeah, yeah, amaranth or yeah. whatever, you know, whatever works yeah, well yeah. together. And they're nice and bulky. They like bulk up their mixes. Yeah. 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 They're, they're a good cost effective way to same thing with pea shoots. Definitely. They're a good cost effective way to like add weight to your mixes when yeah. you have more expensive items that may yeah, be we, making it not as we fly, through, advantageous. we fly through pea shoots, man. Yeah. yeah. Just can't, yeah. can't keep up with enough of them. Yeah, the peas look the peas look beautiful. They're like uh, more like a tendril kind yeah, these of. These are tendrils. This yeah. is beautiful tendrils. We have the field pea as well, but these are just a bit more popular. Yeah, I'm going with chefs for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're sure. just yeah. When when beautiful you take one out, they're way more beautiful than just the standard pea shoot. For sure. For yeah. sure. I like them. All. Yeah. Yeah, man. How do they taste compared to like just regular pea shoots? Any different? You tell us, boss man. I really don't think so. <laughs> Personally. Yeah, pretty cool, man. Nice earthy flavor. Very pea. Pea focused, mm. very tender. Yeah, yeah, I they're very nice well. and tender. Like that's that's uh, what I would say. I like the I like the field peas. They grow a lot the longer. Um, yeah, but cute. I feel like the shelf life on these guys. I mean, we've done tests for peas. They can stay in the fridge for three weeks and still be crisp. Um, crisp, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's nice, nice uh, green for longevity in a fridge. Pea shoots are crazy how long they last. Yeah, right? well, they yeah. yeah, they do. What's kind of the shelf life on the flowers? Do they vary depending on the variety, or is it all pretty much across Look, the board I mean, similar? Flowers, we, we treat flowers like amaranth and basil. Um, ah, got you know, it. We try to yeah. promote chefs to use them as quickly as possible. <laughs> Marigolds, however, have a long shelf life. They do. Like yeah. when we when we like pull them apart for the petals, yeah. and we like put a batch of petals in the fridge, they'll last like more than a week. Well, actually, wow. yeah. hear me out. I think. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think once me. once we pull petals off the stems and away from their actual vegetation as well, I feel like they last longer too. Mm. So once we pull them out and we make our petal mix that we put on top of our fiesta bed, for example, I feel like they have a better shelf life than just sitting on the stem. Um, I agree with you. I'm yeah. not sure what the reason is, but it's true. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe just they're holding more moisture and retain more moisture on their actual host yeah. of a bud essentially. But yeah, I just feel like they last longer in mixes. Like our fiesta blends last. A good 10, 12 days with no nice. issues on the pedals as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. For longevity, Marcos. The crops look great here. Like whatever you guys are doing is definitely working. So I'd love.